Hey everybody, it's Jason Creel and this is Salon Care Life. Today I've got a story to share with you and I want to get to that at the end of the video but I also want to talk about what, I've, as I've been thinking, just three things that you pretty much need to have to be successful in the lawn care business and if you are successful you can probably attribute it to you know these three things coming together if you're not successful it's probably because one of these three things is not working for you exactly right and then i want to get to the story with a uh, deal i had with a customer today and share that with you i think you might find that insightful so let's get started okay and when i talk about three things i'm not talking about you need a, a lawnmower or something like that obviously you're going to need some equipment or you need a, a person or you know there's some some it's not just three but as i think of why does sometimes the lawn business not work and why sometimes it does work so i think the first thing you need is a good market because sometimes you may have everything going for you as a person but you're just not in the right market and, and that may mean a, a number of different things it may mean that you're just in a, a market that's too competitive it may mean that you're in a market where there's really not enough demand for your services it may mean you know it, it's like if you were uh, your favorite sports team was going to win the championship one year if it wasn't for that other team that just happened to be world class uh, that year and you end up coming in second place. Well, that, that can be the way it is sometimes lawn care biz. You know, you think I, I could be successful in here, but that one company is so big and powerful and got an unlimited marketing budget and they're dominating so I can't get going. Or maybe it's not one company, it's just a lot of them. So you got to have the right market. Another thing you got to have to be successful is you got to have the right uh, business mindset. You know, there's some people that are in a good market Okay, but they don't have the business skills to build a pull off, to build a market their business. You know, the customers are there for the taking, but they don't know how to go out and get them. It's like you're fishing in a good pond, a lot of fish, but you're just not a very good fisherman. And then the third thing, quickly, and we'll talk about this a little bit more, is this: you, you got to have, you know, good skills, good technician, good whatever. So if you're mowing grass, just the ability, whether you do it or you hire people, people that are that do a good job, that do good work. So if you have those three things that come together, then you have a successful business. Obviously there's other things, you know, when I say business skills, uh, the second thing I mentioned, I mean, that can include, you know, being able to market, being able to manage your money, being able to recruit good people to work for you. You know, look at my situation I'm in now. I'm in a pretty good market. Now I'm in a competitive market. There's a, there's a lot of competitors. Uh, I have, you know, the, the ability to go out there and, and do the lawn care work and then I, I have at least some sense of a business mind and I've gotten better at that over time and you don't have to have all these going just perfectly um, but if you had like a great business mind and you know great employees that could do the work for you or you were just great at doing the work and you hit this unbelievable market that wasn't that you know had a great demand but not that much competition well then you know you got you got an unbelievable combination that can be awesome you can really grow fast and truth is, if you're in a really good market that has a great demand, not that much competition, you don't even have to be that great to have a great business mind. Or you, you could probably do halfway sloppy work and still grow because you're in such a good market. The opposite being if you're in a, a, a tough market, like I said, no demand for your services or little demand, not enough demand, or it's just very competitive, then even if you are very skilled at the, at the technician side doing the actual work, you, you've got to have like a great business mind to be able to break into that market or it may take you a lot longer to get established. So like I said, if you get these three all come together, awesome market, good business mind and great skilled labor, then, it, then it's a good thing. If you've got, you know, two of the three working for you, it, it can still happen. I mean, you don't have to, you know, score A plus on all three of these to make it work. I'm just saying uh, if you're severely lacking in one of these areas, it's going to be tough. And if you're very skilled, but you might just be in the wrong market and it's just, you know, it's just the wrong market. There's nothing you can do about that. So yeah, what I'd like to hear from you in the comments before I get to my story is, is what's your situation? Uh, do you feel like, hey, I'm in a good market, but I, I really need to, to work on my business mindset and just being a better business person? Um, to be honest with you, I feel like that, that's me in some sense. I feel like I'm doing pretty good the technician side. Uh, I'm in a good market, but I'm trying to improve as a business person. Or do you feel like you got what it takes? It's just you're just in a tough market, something like that. So I'd like to hear your situation in the comments. Now, to my story that happened to me today, 
pretty interesting you know sometimes i'll, I'll uh, talk about my real life situations on here and i use that people that can relate but i was i'm doing a weed control fertilization for a lady today and uh, she's a new customer this year and it's a, a large yard that had a lot of problem weeds in it okay and i knew this yard was going to take a while to get turned around i've been doing the next door neighbor's yard for quite some time and i knew that this yard had been neglected from a weed control and fertilization standpoint and anyway, anyway they bought the house and they hired me this year i figured out pretty quickly that this was not going to be an ideal customer as she uh you know early on did not have an understanding of how long it was going to take to get rid of the weeds now i told her today i said listen if you have a dandelion in your yard i come out here i spray the dandelion it goes away you never see it again she her grass is she's got nuts says she's got tons of dallas grass it, you know th these if you're not familiar though the, you know tough weeds to get rid of some virtually nearly impossible but i mean tough tough weeds to get rid of and it's a big yard and i'm not going out there hand pulling them but i'm working on it and it's showing improvement but she sees improvement because in the spring i got rid of some of the cool season weeds well then all these warm season weeds pop up and she's so she comes out today i think this was my fourth maybe uh maybe fifth treatment on the yard and she comes out today she says you know what i'm not happy with the yard and she's already prepaid for the year so i mean i don't think she's going to cancel on me but i say well you know what i'm i'm I say, i'm working on it you've got these these tough weeds i know we've talked about it before because the thing is we have this conversation almost every time i go to her house and she started talking about it and she's listening and smiling but she's she's uh just not happy and i i'm explaining to her i said listen these these weeds are tough uh, i'm working on it every time and you're going to continue to see progress i'm not going to pretend that next year you're not going to have a single weed well she did the old classic maneuver she points at her neighbor's yard now not the neighbor that i do on the other side of her house which is has a virtually immaculate yard and he's out there mowing it frequently and everything um, but the other neighbor had a really nice yard and she says they use such and such a company and they're you know why does her yard look so good and it looked like a yard that honestly had been sodded about a year ago it was perfectly level Look like it got mowed frequently my customer does not mow her grass very often it's very tall and shaggy and you know it's just one of them things i'm not mowing her grass but it's just it's just one thing she doesn't mow her grass very often so uh she looks over that yard and i said well you know I, I i don't know i don't know the history behind that yard but i can you know pretty guarantee they didn't just start their treatments this year and they didn't inherit a yard that had all these problem weeds but you know, I, I just told her, and this has been my new strategy when people start complaining. I just give them a way out. I say, you know, listen, if you think that somebody else can do a better job, you want to go a different direction, that is perfectly fine with me. I said, because to be honest with you, I don't, I wish you didn't have these weeds either. I'd rather come up to your yard, spray a few weeds and be gone. But I'm spending way more time on your yard than I am other people's yard. She acknowledges everything. And, and then she brought up the same subject that she's brought up, I know, for at least the third time. And she wants to know if i can spray the rock look she's got like a rock bed it doesn't really have any shrubs or anything and she said can you spray that rock area uh in my backyard and i i told her the first time i did i said i'll spray it this time but that's not going to be something i'm going to do on a regular basis because when you spray it in bed areas whether rocks or whatever you'll use different products it's a different service i charge a separate price for that and she doesn't want to pay that she just wants me to do it for free and i don't want to do it for free i don't want to do it i'm spending a lot of time on her yard and she's already not satisfied i don't want to just throw that in extra and she started talking about the vines growing up in her bushes and she says her mowing guy won't come and, and take care of those weeds either and he won't pull that and i said you know i said there are people out there that can keep this yard immaculate you know now she's getting by on probably a bare minimum plant having her grass cut every two weeks maybe less often than that not having the shrubs trimmed not having the weeds kept out of the flower bed i said there's people that can do this for you but now it's gonna cost you i mean they they you know she got a big yard a lot of shrubs you know i'm thinking they can keep these shrubs trimmed they can put seasonal flowers in for you they can you know we can do your fire ant control they keep your grass mowed weekly they come out here and hand pull weeds out of your flower beds put your fresh mulch pine straw whatever i mean they they will do it for you i said but it's gonna cost money i mean it you know it they probably might charge you four or five hundred dollars a month and that's true i'm not exaggerating and then she just you know when i told her that she just kind of makes a face and like shakes her head you know i'm not doing that 
And and that, and that's when I kind of got to the bottom of it. And that's why I said, you know what? I, I, I didn't say this to her, but I'm thinking in my head, okay, we figured it out here. So what happened here is she ordered a hamburger steak and then she got disappointed when it wasn't a filet that came out. You know what I'm saying? She, she said, where's the lobster tail? And she ordered an $8.99 hamburger steak with a little mushroom gravy on it. And you deal with people like this, they want you to include extra things for free. And I'm charging her a fair price on her yard. I'm taking care of her yard and I'm, I'm putting a lot of effort in her yard. A lot more than I do on a lot of other yards because she's got a lot of weeds. But she wants somebody, you know, doing stuff with her shrubs and all, but she doesn't want to pay for it. And I think this is a, a great business lesson not to, to cave into that. If they want to pay four or $500 a month, have somebody come out there and keep everything immaculate, they can do it. I mean, I, I got friends that'll do it for them and it'll look great. You know, if she wants her yard to look like her neighbor's yard, then I got friends that can come in there and scrape it down to the dirt and lay some brand new sod and she won't have to deal with that Dallas grass anymore. It'll be gone. But that's gonna cost some money. You know, that's five or six thousand dollars. You know, it's it's one of these deals where, and I'm not I'm not making a direct correlation of this, but just occasionally I'll go to Taco Bell and order something off the dollar menu. And when it comes out there, let's say I order some kind of rice and bean burrito for a dollar. And when it comes out there, I'm not disappointed that it didn't taste just unbelievable. I mean, I paid a dollar for it. You know what I'm saying? I don't go, I don't take it back up to the counter and say, I'm, I'm excuse me, ma'am, I think you forgot to put the steak and the sour cream and the tomatoes and the guacamole on this wrap. You know, it's like, no, we didn't forget. It doesn't come with that. It costs a dollar. Okay. You're paying me to do a normal service. And we're doing the service. You're paying your mowing guy to come every two weeks. He's cutting it so high because you got to cut it high when it's growing as fast as it is. You're only going to cut it every two weeks. And you're not paying anybody to take care of the shrubs or pull the weeds out. And that's what you get. So it's tough. You know, I, I think as a business owner, you got to hold your ground. Uh, don't give in to the people. And I'm not saying you can't help somebody out that needs help or whatever. If somebody needs something, throw a little extra in for free every once in a while. Um, but you, you gotta you gotta make sure you're staying profitable because you know what you want to help people I want to help people but if you go out of business because you're not making any money then you're gonna have a hard time helping anybody sometimes people have plenty of money they just don't want to spend it on the lawn guy they want to get you to throw it in for free and I think the lesson of the day is not and I think this was what was funny you know sometimes when people uh, I put the little yard signs in her yard to let them know I've been there and then to some degree it's advertising. But mostly it's just to say, hey, I've been to your house that day in case I didn't see them. Well, I put hers up by her front door. A lot of times I put them out on the street if the yard looks good. Well, her yard didn't look that good, so I put the sign up by the front door. Well, you know, we had that long conversation. I'd get finished spraying her yard and, and go on down the street to another house in the same neighborhood. And as I came back out of the neighborhood, guess what? She had taken that sign from her front door and she had stuck it out there by the street, just like her neighbor's was, which her yard looked unbelievable. And so she, I guess she, you know, I don't know if she wanted it to people to see, this is who's doing my yard and look how bad of a job he's doing, or this is who's doing my yard and, and I just want mine to be my sign out there with everybody else. I, you know, I don't know what her thought was. I thought about stopping and grabbing the sign and taking it home with me, but I'd, I just left it out there. I thought, whatever, I don't care. If somebody sees it, they, I'll own it. That's my yard and I'm, it's a work in progress. That's the end of the story. Thanks for watching the video. I'm Jason Creel. I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel. I'd also encourage you if you're going to the GIE Expo this year, there's a link in the description of the video to get you a half price ticket. It's an affiliate link. They pay me a small commission uh, if you sign up through the link and you get a half price ticket. Appreciate you watching. Let me hear from you in the comments. I'll talk to you later. Bye.